If you're creating music using GarageBand and you want to stay on the right side of the copyright laws, in this video I'm going to break down the do's and don'ts of copyright when it comes to creating in GarageBand. So let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. So if that sounds like the kind of thing you're into, consider subscribing. Now, if you're anything like me, you'd like to release music and not worry about it getting flagged for copyright violations. So there's a few simple things that you can do to make sure that the music that you release to YouTube and to all of the other platforms will not be flagged and will be okay to sell, to stream and to distribute. So that's what we're diving into in this video. Let's get started. Now I'm going to focus in on GarageBand in this video because it's what I use, but it's pretty much generic advice across all of your different DAWs or digital audio workstations. And that is this, if they are providing loops and samples and virtual instruments, generally they're going to be royalty free. So in the case of Apple, all of the Apple loops, all of the virtual instruments, all of the sounds and presets that you use within GarageBand can be used royalty free. But there's one little caveat on that or one little warning and that is you need to actually combine multiple different loops together. It sounds pretty obvious I know but if you just take one Apple loop, play that back, release it and say here's my original work, Apple are not going to be happy with that. So you can use Apple loops, you can use all of the different functionality within GarageBand on your Mac or on your iPhone or iPad completely royalty free and that includes commercial releases, using it in your videos, releasing it to YouTube, to Spotify, to Apple Music, all of that can be done. But there's a few things to keep in mind, which is what I'll be demonstrating a little bit later in this video. That all sounds pretty simple, yeah, but there's one other thing that I wanted to mention before we jump in and show you some demonstrations here, and that is you also want to be careful of just putting together two, three, or even four loops or samples together and then releasing that as your own original work. Why? Why? Because a lot of other people are doing exactly that. So we're at the point now where so many people have released music using GarageBand and using other DAWs using the basic presets and the basic default settings that you could release something that has four different loops put together in the same generic way and someone else may have already released that as a song. So the more unique creativity you can add to make it your own, the better off you you're going to be, the less likely it's going to match because what a lot of these systems do, especially on YouTube, is they use content ID matching, which is an automatic way of actually matching up your sounds with previously released sounds. So if you've got a song that sounds very similar or exactly the same to a song that someone else has released, it's going to flag that and suddenly you've got a copyright claim against your song. So we want to avoid that. So that's what I'm going to show you now. If you just wanted that information, you're pretty much free to go. But what I'm going to do now is dive into GarageBand and show you some examples of the do's and don't do's that are going to keep you safe releasing your music. All right, so here we are in GarageBand. Let's just give you a quick demo of what I'm talking about. So if we came in here and we grabbed a loop, let's just say we grabbed this classic disco hi-hat and threw this on here and hit play. That's sounding pretty cool. Now, if you were to release just that hi-hat sample, this is what Apple are talking about. They don't want you doing that because they don't want people selling what they're putting out there for free. But you would very rarely just have one hi-hat sound. So what if we go in here and we grab something else? What if we grab the uh, Cosmic Cruise kit kick here? Throw that in there. Why don't we also grab the Cosmic Cruise snare? And now we're building out a beat. Sounding cool. But again, if we were just to release that, well, A, it's not really a song, but B, someone else has probably already put those three loops together in that exact pattern. So what else can we do to make this a bit more custom? Well, we can come in here to our tempo and let's change our tempo. What if we were to up the tempo to say 128? Now it's gonna sound different. So we're getting a different kind of sound. What else can we do? Well, we can add some melodic kind of sounds here. So if instead of being in the drums here, what if we came into some guitars? And let's check out this one here, the, the talk box guitar. We'll drag that in there. Now we're talking. We've got our own 
kind of sound. But again, if we want to vary this up, what about we change the key? So, yep, everyone will have it in the default C major. What if we drop this one? Let's just make it A flat major. Give that a try. So this is what I'm saying here, you're varying up your sound. So the reason you're going to get into trouble with copyright violations is it's going to sound too much like what someone else has produced. Now I've got other videos which I'll link up the top and down below about all the other things you can do to loops that you can change the looping here, you can adjust the transposition, the speed, you can reverse them, you can do other things. And then of course, what I would actually recommend is coming in here to another instrument entirely. So let's just go to our keyboard and actually bringing in some different sounds. So if we just went to our keyboard and we brought in some electric piano here. We could actually play in a bit of a sound there. Now I've put myself in a weird key here. So let's, uh, let's bring it back to maybe to D major here so that we can be, we can be there and we'll hit record. And that was a terribly played part, but you get the drift here. We can add in our own little parts there. And even if we're using autoplay or some of the other features in here, varying it up. Now the ultimate variation is of course going to be your voice. So uh, let's just mute out that one. And if we were to add here, so if you're adding in your own voice, that's obviously going to be very distinct. So if you're adding in even just a few voice samples here, uh, let's just do something a bit fun. We'll hit the record here and we'll play this one along here. Three, four. Take it slow. Take it slow. There you go. You can just add in whatever you want to be in there, and then that's going to be part of your track. Take it slow. So hopefully you get the point here. You want variety. You don't want it to be straight up, just using loops, just using samples. If you can add in your own custom tones, your custom beats, your own voice, anything that is going to make it different. And that's the key to creating a song that's not only going to not breach copyright, but actually be interesting and sound cool for a listener to listen to as well. I hope you found this video useful and you've got a few tips here about avoiding any of those copyright issues. There's two videos links down below if you want to check some more out. You can subscribe by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon and I'll see you on the next video.